Oh man, I, I actually can't believe that we're still having this discussion, especially in light of like newer evidence. And like, here's what's kind of wild. When we're talking longevity, potential life expectancy, as crazy as it sounds, I can even understand the debate between high protein and low protein. I truly can't understand that debate, right? I can understand uh, methionine. I can understand this whole discussion that we've seen in rodent model research, and I can see both sides. But one thing that I truly have a hard time understanding is how we can still like kind of paint things a certain way. Because there's an interesting body of research that has just I've really been surfacing a lot, but there was a very interesting paper in the International Journal of General Medicine that took a look at a huge amount of data, like huge amount of data from 175 countries looking at life expectancy and, and diet and a number of other things. And results are pretty interesting, so I wanna dive into it. Before I dive into that, after today's video, our sponsor is House of Macadamia. Before you skip this ad, let me tell you that this is a 20% off discount link plus a free box of macadamia nut creamer. So it's pure macadamia nuts, 100% macadamia nuts that you reconstitute with water to make a macadamia nut milk or straight add to your coffee as a creamer. You get a free box, you just have to make sure you add it to your cart. But 20% off whatever you want from them, whether it's straight up macadamia nuts, whether it's going to be their cold pressed macadamia nut oil, their macadamia nut bars, which you've probably seen in Starbucks now, they're everywhere. They're straight up macadamia nuts, they're sugar-free chocolate covered macadamia nuts, sugar-free white chocolate covered macadamia nuts, a couple different kinds of macadamia nut bars, and their macadamia nut butter. Okay, not only are they the most cost-effective macadamia nut you're gonna find, but they support the farmers. They literally are supporting the South African farmers who are taking a serious hit right now if you pay any attention to what's going on over there. Everything is processed within an hour's drive of where it's grown and harvested. This is the most legit macadamia product you are going to find. And it's 20% off using that link down below. Please don't skip it. Give them a shot. It helps this channel. These sponsors keep me doing what I'm doing. So check them out down below underneath this video. So what this study did is it did a statistical analysis of 175 different countries, okay? And they found that there was a very, very strong correlation between meat intake and life expectancy. Why is it that we don't see this, right? Like I understand that Blue Zone documentary that came out was not intended to like bash meat. Like the journalist did a great job of really keeping it well-rounded and talking about the lifestyle, right? The activity, the walking, the relationships, the sunlight, just their overall low stress life. He did a great job with that. But then you look at how it's been twisted. It's been twisted into being this anti-meat video. And I don't care who you are, where you stand on the meat, no meat thing. Like I'm not going to judge, but we cannot just highlight some science and just disregard the larger bodies of data. And again, I echo what I said earlier, when I say that whether you wanna say high meat or low meat, that's fine, or high protein, low protein. But one thing that we do see with this statistical analysis is that when you look at from newborn life expectancy to five-year life expectancy to overall life expectancy, meat intake was correlated with better life expectancy. But you might look at this and you say, well, correlation, I mean, that's just correlation. Like, there's a number of different things. And I totally agree, I get that. However, this was a very comprehensive statistical analysis. And it took a look and factored in obesity, it factored in caloric intake, it even factored in carb crop, like carb intake, into this. So it wasn't just like a little bit of statistics. It had serious science behind it and some even machine learning there to kind of help understand. And still, in spite of all these confounders that has been adjusted for, meat intake was still associated with better life expectancy. What's actually kind of ironic is there was a weak correlation between carb crop and poor life expectancy. Not strong enough to make any giant leaps, but the point is, is that it almost seems, and I am jumping to somewhat of a conclusion here, that the more carb intake in tandem with less protein seemed to not be as good. More protein with slightly less carbohydrate intake seemed to be slightly better. However, it's a lot of data. You've got a lot of people that are athletes versus non-athletes versus sedentary versus America, which probably it, like throws a giant wrench in the rest of the world's data because we are so largely unhealthy and eat such garbage. I'm sure it threw a wrench in the overall data. But let's take a look really quick at why 
this could have such a big role when it comes down to just life expectancy. I'm not a longevity expert, so I'm very careful. I tread lightly. I'm just a nutrition guy on the internet, but I do read boatloads of research. And when you look at things like meat intake, even in moderate amounts, you're getting micronutrients from meat that you may not get in other places, right? And if your diet is rich in just refined carbohydrates and minimal protein, your, chance, your chances of getting those micronutrients from vegetables are pretty slim. I commend the person that does a vegan diet that actually pays attention to their micronutrient intake. I sincerely do. I know a number of them. Okay, you guys, like Sun Warrior, who's a sponsor on this channel, they are a, obviously a plant-based company. There's a couple of the people that work there that their skin is glowing, they are healthy, they look vibrant, but I know them personally and they literally will even keep spreadsheets to make sure they're getting adequate nutrition. And you might think that seems like a lot of work, but I commend them and I applaud them because they're doing it right and getting those micronutrients. You expect a regular person to do that? No, like we can barely tie our shoes in the morning and feed the dogs and get out the door, let alone pay attention to our nutrient intake. So when you look at things like red meat, when you look at chicken, when you look at fish, you look at omega-3 profiles, you're killing a lot of birds with one stone when you eat even a moderate amount of good quality meat. Not to mention it fills you up. When the world of longevity is largely impacted by the obesity epidemic, if you're eating meat and you're less hungry and you're more satiated, that's impactful. That's very impactful. There's also essential nutrients like taurine and creatine that we get out of meat that we would otherwise have to supplement. Taurine is available in red meat. Creatine is available in red meat. But now we're having to supplement it, which I don't have a problem with as an ergogenic aid and performance enhancer, but like for regular life, like it makes some sense, right? The other piece that we forget is, especially even in the low carb community, is we get so on our high horse about demonizing mTOR and insulin. mTOR is required for growth. Remember, longevity is a balance of AMPK and mTOR. Okay, caloric restriction, but also adequate recovery. If we do not have adequate mTOR, we do not have adequate P70S6K phosphorylation and muscle protein synthesis and a balance of MPS over muscle protein breakdown, what's gonna happen to us? We're gonna waste away and even if we do live for a long period of time, we're not gonna have any vibrancy whatsoever and we're gonna feel just devoid of any energy in life, right? That's no way to go through life. It's imperative for our muscle. What happens when someone's 60 years old, 65 years old and they take a fall? They break their hip and that's it? So then you got another 40 years of life and you got a bum hip because you didn't have the muscle to support it? Okay, there's these very biomechanical things we need to look at too. How do we support this? Protein, okay? Now one thing that I consider people looking at is we don't need to just have a smorgasbord of protein and piles of meat all the time. We don't need to be that but we definitely need to not demonize it. And we also need to take periods of time where we abstain from it. I think that periods of caloric restriction, possibly even periods of fasting, could be hugely beneficial, tied in with periods of surpluses. Growth and repair, autophagy, recycle. Growth and repair, autophagy, recycle. Lean in to your body's inherent systems. We do need this, and the literature is strong on it. So what's my take on the blue zones here? I think they're amazing. I think we learn a lot as far as fiber. I think we learn a lot as far as lifestyle. I think we learn a lot as far as polyphenols. And this in no way, shape, or form is saying that vegetables are bad. Not even remotely. I eat so many vegetables and I wish I could even eat more. But the problem is they fill me up so much, I can't eat it anymore. And when I couple that with the amount of protein and meat that I eat, shoot, there's not room for more. But I am an omnivore through and through. And that's what the literature and the machine learning and the data is suggesting. And I think deep down, it's what a lot of our souls and our hearts are saying too. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. We'll see you tomorrow.